Hi, everyone. Um, happy weekend. The weather is awesome here in Dallas. Um, hope everyone's having a good day. Thanks to anyone who uh, watched my last video. Um, I got some good feedback. Uh, my hair is dry this time. Um, someone also asked if I could just give a brief overview of radiation oncology. So that is the goal of today's video. Um, it is Radonc uh, 101. So let me uh, go ahead and share my slides. Okay, this is Radiation Oncology 101. Um, in the next 10 minutes, I'm gonna try to go over some sort of basic terminology, um, ideas in radiation oncology. Um, I think this is probably more geared towards um, non-radonks, maybe early trainees. Um, you know, I think in today's multi-D sort of setting, it is really important to have a at least basic understanding of what other specialties are doing. So let's just start with dose. How do we measure radiation dose? So the unit we use is called the gray, which is joules per kilogram. And a term we often refer to as something called biologic effective dose or BED. So what does that mean? That is the true um, dose delivered by a combination of dose per fraction and the total dose delivered. Um, look at the formula here. You don't need to know the details of the formula, but basically know that the things that go into it are the number of fractions and the dose per fraction, as I mentioned, and also something called the alpha beta ratio, which measures the intrinsic radiosensitivity of a tissue. And that'll be different for different tumors versus normal tissue. So without having to know the details of this formula, it's important to realize that bigger fraction sizes are more potent. They have a higher BED. So if I give 20 gray in one fraction, which is a common dose for like a brain met, that is a BED of a 60 gray versus 20 gray in five fractions, often a palliative dosing, gives a BED of less than half that, just 28 grain. The second thing to know is that there are different ways to achieve the same biologic effective dose. 50 grain, five fractions, or 75 grain, 25 fractions, both get you to a BED of about 100 grain. And in, uh, coincidentally, those are both regimens we use for pancreas SBRT. Um, I liken that to basically you can get to a dollar using a dollar bill or four quarters. So that's BED. Um, second part I want to talk about is just how do we look at a treatment plan? So you may see this in treatment summaries. Um, this is obviously a prostate SBRT treatment. I can see the prostate, the fiducials. So I liken our treatment plans to almost like a topographic map. Um, each of the circles represents a different dose level, also called an isodose line. The smaller circles generally are higher dose levels. And then as you go further out, like the dark blue, those are lower dose levels, kind of like altitude on a map. So that's how we evaluate where the dose is actually going. So terminology for radiation targets, you may hear these GTV, CTV, what do they mean? So GTV stands for gross tuber volume. That is the visible tumor on a PET, on any imaging studies, on endoscopy, other visualization modalities, tumor that you see that you know is there. Um, a margin around that you can see that is, so GTV is a red circle, then the orange circle is a CTV or clinical target volume. That encompasses areas of potential microscopic spread, um, including nodal beds at risk based on, you know, how we know that cancer drains. Um, and then there's something called the ITV, which is the internal target volume. That adds a margin for internal motion, because we know even if the patient, him or herself, is immobilized, things in the body are still moving. And the most um, common example of that is breathing. So lung tumors, targets near the diaphragm, like liver tumors, you have to account for internal target volume, which is the motion internally. And then last, there's something called planning target volume, PTV, which accounts for any setup uncertainty. So if you're treating something in like the distal arm, um, that is going to have more setup uncertainty than something like in the brain where the patient is in a more rigid mass. So sort of all these sort of levels to encompass different uncertainties, uh, different, um, you know, different volumes. And, and, and I won't get into here, but you can actually dose the different levels differently to giving higher dose to the gross tumor. Okay. So this slide I think is super important and I kind of titled it radiation categories because these are sort of ways we describe our radiation treatment. And I have seen confusion versus sort of mixing and matching the different categories in recent guidelines. I saw um, sort of apples and oranges were being compared. So I just want to go over how we think about our radiation plan. How do we divvy up the different characteristics? So the first is just the delivery mode. 
External beam versus brachy. So external beam means that the radiation source is external, which is the majority of treatments. Um, versus brachytherapy means the radiation source is internal, inside the patient, either prostate seeds or high-dose rate brachytherapy um, or intraoperative radiation therapy. The radiation source is literally touching the patient. Um, the second is something called fraction size, um, though it's a little bit more complicated than that. And that's generally divided into conventional versus hypofractionated versus SVRT saber. So what are those? Conventional fractionation generally is small dose per fractions, many fractions, large fields, generally 1.8 to 2 gray per fraction. And this little cartoon on the right um, is kind of like a nerdy joke, but basically that dose was determined in part by radiating like testicles of French ram. So this is a picture that every radiation oncologist has seen. Um, hypofractionated is basically anything that is larger dose per fraction than conventional. And that includes SBRT or SABR, stereotactic body radiation therapy or stereotactic ablative radiation therapy. Those terms are interchangeable. Some people have strong preferences over which they prefer. Um, Really, when we talk about SBRT or SABR, we refer to large doses per fraction delivered to precise targets, really the tumor alone or GTB alone, with very precise, rigid immobilization. And the goal is to ablate visible tumor. Um, in the US, it is five fractions or less, and that is a billing definition. Next is particle type. Um, I put here photon, electron versus proton. There are other particle types, carbon, helium. Those are much less common. So the most common is photons, also x-rays. Um, that is the most car common particle type. So most radiation is given via photons. Electrons are used for more superficial targets, such as a skin cancer. And then protons, which I'm sure met, most have heard of, the benefit is that there is no exit dose. So the beam enters and then it just falls off. And that spares normal tissues better. OK, the last category we don't need to go into detail about, but it's really, um, you may hear some of these terms, um, probably in response to like insurance authorization, unfortunately, but um, 3D versus IMRT, those are radiation planning techniques. For a 3D plan, this is an older planning technique. Um, the dosimetrist, the person who makes a plan, um, decides the beam arrangements based on the targets and the beams are fixed during delivery. In contrast, IMRT or intensely modulated radiation therapy is inverse planning. So a computer algorithm actually makes the plan based on how the physician, the radon, prioritizes tumor coverage um, versus minimizing dose to normal tissues. Um, these plans tend to be more conformal, meaning that the dose can be better shaped and that can be helpful for irregular targets. So putting that all together, we could describe one course of radiation as the patient's getting external beam radiation, conventionally fractionated photons, and with a 3D plan. And you can kind of do different permutations of the different categories. Um, I hope that makes sense. Okay, so last slide is just, unfortunately, more terminology. Unfortunately, radiation oncology has a ton of terminology, and I included some things that I thought maybe are not totally intuitive. So the first is contouring. So what is that? It's not... Um, not putting on makeup, uh, but it's a process by where we draw out our targets. Um, and some have likened this to using Microsoft Paint. Um, OAR stands for organs at risk. Um, these are the normal tissues surrounding the target and different tissues can have varying tolerances to radiation. So things like the spinal cord or the small intestine you may be have, have to be more careful about. Um, you may have heard the term consolidative radiation, and that is radiation used to eliminate any remaining cancer, generally after other treatments like chemo. So we hear that sometimes for oligomets, um, the patient's gotten chemo surgery, they have a few sites left, let's consolidate it with radiation. Um, linear accelerator, LINA, that is our machine, used to deliver photon or electron radiation, um, kind of looks like a CT with a rotating arm that delivers radiation, it's called the gantry. Ablative, I think I use that term, that is thought to be a radiation dose able to eradicate macroscopic tumor, um, generally thought to be greater than 70 or even greater than 100 BD, depending on obviously the histology, the size, different factors. IGRT, may not hear this a lot, but maybe in the context of insurance approval, this is image-guided radiation therapy where there is automatic image registration between the, the treatment the patient's getting daily and the CT simulation. CT-guided, MR-guided is pretty self-explanatory. It basically means that the simulation and the daily treatments are, are verified by CT or MR. The benefit of MR is better soft tissue visualization. So that may be helpful in cases like liver tumors or other things that aren't seen as well in a CT scan. And then the last term, which um, you may be hearing more now, is what is adaptive radiation. So traditionally for 
radiation, you made a plan at the treatment outset based on the simulation and the patient got the same plan every single day throughout the course of treatment, which would be more than a month, um, regardless of the change in the tumor, change in normal anatomy, weight loss, whatnot. Um, in contrast with adaptive radiation, you can actually change the targets and plan with each treatment or weekly or on demand when you see anatomy change. So it really allows you to adapt or change based on tumor response. Um, that's all I got. Um, hopefully that was helpful. And um, yeah, if you have any questions, you can uh, shoot me an email and um, let me know if there's anything else you'd like me to talk about. Thank you. Uh, okay, let me go ahead and stop this.